I'm going to do it on my own later. And I'm kind of handy. I'm going to build it myself. Okay, valid objection, right? You, there's a reason sales training say attempt to overcome objection. Because you're not going to overcome them all, but you've got to try. And you've got to show some value of why they should still consider your product. So this isn't a sales training. This is a leadership training. So in this instance where I was coaching the game, I saw it. So I asked the sales professional, okay, um, I saw the objection. Did you ask the customer if they had considered, based on being in the home for five years and less, because they shared with you that they're going to flip this at some point because the market's going crazy and they've done well on two homes. So, you know, they're never in a home more than five to 10 years. Um, did you talk to them about rolling the upgrades into their mortgage so they're not out of pocket? and showing them how much that was gonna cost a month on their mortgage for that finishing the basement piece um, and show them that actually once they sell that home, they're gonna get a full return on that full basement. They're only gonna pay one fifth of the cost because they're moving in five to 10 years anyways. And it's actually only $150 a month on their mortgage. So they're actually gonna win versus what they think is saving 30 to 40% by taking money out of their pocket and buying it on their own and building it themselves. And he went, no, I, I didn't think about that. I said, okay, well, let's, let's break down the numbers, right? And so, so I took this individual through the numbers and I said, you know, the, the finished basement is $37,000. Okay, and I said, and, th and this is exactly how I explained it. You got $37,000 and this customer is gonna amortize their mortgage over 25 years. Even though they're gonna be out of the home in five years, it's the best way to do it and they acknowledge that. So you got 25 years times 12 payments. You got 25 years times 12 payments. So that is uh, 250, is that 300, 250, yeah, 300. So you got 300 payments for $37,000. Okay, so now you're looking at, geez, I need a calculator handy, but let's call that, if I'm not mistaken, 123.33 dollars. Okay, that's not including interest rates and all that stuff, but but let's assume that's 123 dollars over 300 payments, if my math's correct. And by the way, I'm not looking at a calculator, so I've got the math wrong. <laughs> Bear with me. The theory was right at the time. Um, so 25 times 12, you got 300 payments, 300 times 123, yeah, because 300 times 10 is 30. So it's about $37,000. So you also said, you know, they're gonna flip the house in five to 10 years. So let's talk about that. Five years at 12 months is 60 payments, right? Even though their mortgage is gonna be amortized over 25 years. So now you got 60 payments at 123, and so they're really only spending 72, but I think that's 7380. Again, no calculator. So they're going to spend 7380 in the five years that they're in the home to have their finished basement. And then they're going to sell it and they're going to get full return on that value for the finished basement. And the market's going to go up because we know the market continues to increase in our marketplace. But regardless whether it goes up and down, they're gonna get full return for that finished basement when they sell. And it's gonna cost them $7,300 if they're there for five years. And they just told you, they don't wanna do it with the builder because they can do it on their own for $21,000. But they gotta take this out of the pocket. And this can go into their monthly payment and they can get all this return. And when they do this, they void their warranty. And when they do it with us, they protect that warranty. And the individual went, wow, um, didn't think about that. Now I went in with that agenda. I didn't know that was gonna be the conversation, but I knew there was areas of opportunity because that individual could sell and close. Customers loved them because we did two customer survey, um, sorry, we did monthly customer satisfaction um, surveys and the feedback was all positive. So I knew we didn't have an attitude problem, a non-willing problem, a customers don't love them problem. I just knew I had a behavioral gap that no one had showed them yet. Shame on me. We put them in the role and we had sales behavior training and we had customer service focus every month and we did one-on-ones, but we actually never did upgrade sales training. So here's where it starts to come together. So, so there's the coaching opportunity. One, before I started, I recognized he was killing his numbers. Customers loved him. I told him I was there to observe if I could help in any way. 
provide some recognition of all the great stuff he's doing like that, hitting his numbers and customers loving them, and see if I could take anything away to make his job easier. So here's where the next step came in. So I recognize the sales performance. I coach the opportunity after observing the behavior. And I said, okay, so like, do you get it? He's like, yeah, like, I'm not suggesting what have changed your mind, Mark, but I feel a lot more comfortable having that conversation to educate the client on their options. Awesome. How can I help you with this? And the response was, that's a lot of math every single time to do this. And by the way, I'm not even sure I got the math right without a calculator in my hand, but you got the point. Um, that's a lot of math to do this every time. Boy, you know how the banks have a mortgage calculator, Mark, and you like type in your, your sales price for the home. We use it all the time. Our customers use it as an estimate. You know, you put in the home's $900,000 and you put in that it's going to be amortized over 25 years and you put in the going interest rate that's like, you know, 2.49% at the time and you click enter and it gives you a monthly mortgage payment. I'm like, yeah, he goes, wouldn't that be awesome if we could have that for our upgrades? So if you, if I put in hardwood, um, if I put in a granite countertop and it was an extra $4,000, as I entered that, it would put into this calculator that showed me it was $32 a month over 25 years. And I'm just throwing that math out. Please don't validate that one. But if, if I could do that for all my upgrades and it would constantly be showing what that monthly payment is and the impact of the total mortgage payment, that'd be amazing because that would really help me with that argument and it would really empower our customer to make a decision. Now, when you coach during the game, when you find hurdles in the way, you take a commitment to say, I'm going to go investigate in that. I'm going to get back to you. I said, that's a good one. Let me take it back to our director of sales, who, by the way, was brilliant. Um, and I'm going to give her a shout out, Jen Avalar, tremendous. Um, and, and, and Jen's really process driven. I said, Jen, you know, here's the problem. Um, do you think we can fix it? And by the way, I'm the VP of IT too. So if, if I gave you the team in IT, um, could you go and take this on as a project? Here's my expectations. Here's what the team's telling me. And Jen's like closer to the team than I am. And like, yeah, exactly. That's, that would help. I know a lot of the team would find that beneficial. Great. And, and we walked away in head office and we built this thing. And we brought it back to them and we said, here you go. And guess where the upgrades numbers went? All-time records for the company that were already on that way based on the sales team's behaviors, but we gave them another tool. Now, if you talk about trust, that's when your team starts to say, wow, you, you get it, you saw it, you helped me, you delivered, here's some more. And that's what you want when you're coaching during the game. You want that trust so your team gives you feedback. So that visit finished with me on the floor. After that dialogue, I went up on the floor, visited with